Hey guys, this is Ron. So in this video, uh, number three, uh, we'll be talking about some of our basic data types. So in C, uh, you'll typically see uh, integers, you'll see floats, uh, you'll see chars, uh, but under the hood, a char is really just an integer. And so uh, as we look at our basic data types, I've kind of, or I've left you a link here uh, that will be in the markdown file uh, under 03. That kind of breaks down some of these data types and their ranges. So if we go to it, what we'll see is that in fact a char is one byte and under the hood we see that you know these are just integers. Integers are numbers without you know a decimal point, right? They're whole numbers. But we see as we go and start looking at actual integers, we see that there's you know a storage size of either two or four bytes. Well, that could be a big difference. That means we could have a number in the range of that all the way up to a range of that, right? So that's kind of a big deal. Uh, we also have unsigned integers and we have signed integers. Um, we have shorts, which we can assure are two bytes. Um, we have longs, which could be eight bytes or four bytes. Uh, and we have unsigned long, which is eight bytes. So, you know, just the integer type alone kind of seems all over the place. And so, as you're writing C, one of the things that you need to start thinking about is, you know, the range of the number um, that you want to store. Um, because which integer type you choose, you know, could be a big deal. You may or may not be able to store that number. Additionally, you need to also start thinking about whether, you know, those numbers have to be, you know, positive or could they also be negative? Because that might determine whether you should use a signed number or an unsigned number, right? So it gets a little uh, hairy sometimes. And then they throw things in here like, uh, are you on a 32-bit operating system or a 64-bit operating system? Um, and so, again, it can get kind of hairy here, right? Luckily, though, um, there is this macro size of and that kind of comes in handy in that we can specify you know something is integer but then do the size of on it and find out whether or not uh, it's two bytes or four bytes additionally uh, if we go back here okay so we talked about size of but additionally Again, we need to think about whether it's signed, unsigned, if we're on a 32-bit operating or 64-bit operating system. And so we, we're gonna have to kinda dig into those details a little bit more. Now, I'm not trying to make this seem more complicated than it has to be, but as you start uh, working more and more with C, you just kinda have to make sure it's in the back of your mind, you know, what you're working with. All right, so let's take these a piece at a time, signed or unsigned, right? So I have an article here, signed versus unsigned, and it just kind of talks a little bit about how this, you know, kind of works. So in a uh, signed and unsigned number, they take one of the bits uh, from, uh, or from, a little tongue tied here, uh, they take in a signed number, this uh, most significant bit, so this is the uppermost bit, and that's designated to indicate whether or not it's positive or negative. This is why when we look back here, a signed number can go down to negative, but notice the range, it can only go up to 127 in this case. Whereas if it was an unsigned number, because they still have that bit to use, it can't go negative, but it can go all the way up to 255, right? And that's because either this bit is used to indicate positive or negative, or this bit is used as a part of the number, right? So this is our, our binary representation. So this is one, two, four, uh, 8, 16, 32, 64, um, 128. So if we take this 128 bit out, 
That means if I add up all of these numbers, I can only go to 127, right? And that's why I lose part of that range. But if I can use this bit, that means I can go 127 plus the 128, which means I can go all the way to 255, right? So this is just basic binary. But understanding that, you, you lose some of that top range with a signed number. With an unsigned number, you gain that top range, but you no longer have the ability to write negative numbers, right? So little things you need to think about uh, when working with integers, okay? Now, this two or four bytes, this could be dependent upon your machine type, right? And so you'll wanna test um, whether or not you're getting two or four bytes uh, by using something like the size of operator. And then with this whole 32-bit or 64-bit, again, you need to know what type of machine your system is running on. And we can kind of check our machine. We can do a uname dash A, and we can find out the system that I currently am sitting on. This is a 64-bit machine, right? And so I can kind of make the assumption um, that I should have the higher range. I should have, you know, the four bytes or the eight bytes, you know, in these cases. But again, these are things that I, I should be testing and I can use the size of operator to do it. Additionally, if we kind of come down here, what we'll see is there is a header file called limits.h and inside of limits.h, there are these entries char bit, char max, min, max, and we can kind of plot out again for our system that this binary will be running on, what are the maximum and minimum numbers. So in this case, when they compiled theirs, you know, they were finding that, you know, for an int max, they were going all the way up to this and int min, so on and so forth, right? So that kind of, you know, uh, gives you, um, something to kind of work with um, in specifying uh, your different ranges for you know the integer that you choose right now I wouldn't get too bent around the axe or you know uh, about this you know early on as you're programming but again keep it in the back of your mind that uh, C did not specify exact sizes you know for you know certain things so again depend upon the system you're on it might be two bytes it might be four bytes okay and those are things that you need to you know figure out and we, like I said we can use the size of uh, macro to figure that out uh, and I think they even maybe they don't uh, they don't give you an example of that but we can we can uh, build one real quick it shouldn't take long so if we do uh, let's see, vi will do uh, sizes.c. And we'll do uh, pound include stdio.h so that we can print. And in this case, we won't uh, bring anything into main. And we'll just do int x, right? And then we'll do a print f percent we probably need an LD we'll do a size of X and hopefully we've done everything right right and quit okay now remember in our previous video we used make uh, and even though I don't have a make file, uh, when I do a make sizes, it looks in my directory, tries to find sizes.c, and tries to build it, you know, using some pretty generic parameters, right? So none of the warning flags that, you know, we did in the last video, but it's good enough to compile and kind of test here. So if we do sizes, we see four. So in this case, um, my system is set up when I compile. Um, that an integer int is four bytes, right? And we could have specified 
uh, sizes.c, we could have specified other uh, kind of things. So we could have done, um, let's see, what are some of our other data types that kind of had a, a range? So a long could be four bytes for a 32-bit uh, OS or eight bytes. So let's try this. So let's see a long Y and we'll just copy this and this time we'll do a size of Y. And in fact, I have eight, right? And that makes sense because I have a 64-bit operating system. Now, I could compile this as if it was 32-bit. One of the ways that I could do that is, uh, I think, tac M32, uh, tac O sizes, and it, we're bringing in sizes.c. Now, in this case, it throws a fit, which is fine. Um, hopefully, I think I pasted that in our little help file. Do, do, do. Yep, right here. In order to compile for 32-bit, there's a, a package that I need to install. So let's go ahead and install a GCC multi-lib. So come back to my terminal. I'll paste that in. If I can type my password correctly. All right. So it's going to bring in quite a bit here. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. But essentially what this will give me the ability to do is compile for 32 bits. All right, so we got uh, some warnings because uh, with 32 bits, it wants a long int up here. Um, so we'll just try percent %d instead of percent %ld. Uh, let's see. Format percent %ld expects a type of an argument of type long int, but argument two has a type of unsigned int. Okay, too easy. So uh, in the 32-bit version, they, you know, the size of operator uh, or macro doesn't, you know, output a long int. So vi sizes dot c. Get rid of the l, and we'll try this again. Okay, so this time it worked. And if we look at sizes, it does in fact say that we compiled an ELF, which is a binary on Linux, in 32-bit mode. So, this time when we run it, notice instead of our long being uh, eight bytes, it's now four bytes. So the range of numbers that it can accommodate are quite a bit smaller, right? So we're somewhere in the range of four bytes, right? So we are now in this range instead of this range, right? So again, things that you need to consider when building your program, right? Where is, uh, you know, what kind of system am I compiling this on? What type of system is it, you know, am I compiling for, right? So too easy. Not gonna, you know, get too crazy uh, about, you know, going through this. You can kind of see what's what's going on here. I do want to hit on char. So char says it's, you know, in the range of negative 128 all the way to 127. Now typically a char is going to be used in the range of zero to 127. And why is that? Well. That's because, you know, typically we're representing characters inside those values. So if I look, all right, let me uh, install this, sudo apt install ASCII. This kind of makes a nice little chart so I can see my values. So these are the ASCII representation of characters, right? And so we see that it goes all the way from zero all the way up to 127. 
So that's kind of that range that makes sense for a single byte char. And so when we represent an capital A, what we actually store in there is 65, right? And so if I, let's do chars.c. Probably could have used my other one just to save a little bit of time. That's all right. We'll do char c and we'll say char c is equal to a. Under the hood, we can see that we can print out our actual letter. But again, under the hood, it's actually an integer, right? So we'll use a percent %d. So we've compiled chars and now we're gonna run it. And notice, yes, we do in fact have an A, but it's really stored as 65, which makes sense given our chart of ASCII that in decimal, we have 65, right? Now, if we were to kind of debug this and start looking at memory addresses, more than likely we're going to see a 41 because memory addresses are oftentimes represented in hexadecimal. But when we printed it out, we got it as a 65. Okay, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense to you. Another kind of phenomenon um, that kind of goes back to the signed uh, unsigned is there are times where if we don't choose an appropriate range and we keep adding to our number, all of a sudden our program, you know, does something really funky. And when we go and check to see the value that, you know, a variable holds, all of a sudden it's negative. And you're just like, okay, well, I was only adding. That doesn't really make sense to me. So if we go back to our chars, this time instead of uh, this, we'll get rid of all of that and we'll do a char x and we'll do a for loop now we haven't talked about for loops but it's pretty straightforward so we have this x we first set it to value zero we're going to loop while x is less than or equal to uh or is greater than or equal to zero Kind of space that out so it looks a little bit nicer and then each iteration will increment x so again we'll go over looping but for now we'll just go with it we'll do a print f percent d so this is a decimal and we're gonna print our x and then for one last time after the loop is done let's see what's actually held inside of this value, right? So we're gonna loop until the point when X is no longer greater than or equal to zero, which we're only adding here, so it should never be negative. And then once this loop is done, if it ever finishes, we'll go ahead and print it. And this time we'll do a carriage return so that we can see this on its own line. All right, we'll do make chars. Notice that we started at zero and we kept incrementing, 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 all the way to the point where we got to 127. And if we look back on our chart, well, that looks like uh, we have a signed char. We went all the way up to 127. But then we jumped to negative 128. And that's because we had uh, a signed uh, char, which by default, a standard char is signed unless I tell it that you're unsigned. And so we went to 127. And because we're using some number like this, I eventually get to the point where I've maxed this out and one more add actually incremented 
the sign bit. And so I went all the way to the other side of the chart. Down to 128. All right. Now, if we actually broke out the ASCII, it's probably not. Uh, actually, it probably is all ones all the way across. And that's why we get um, one, negative 128. All right. So um, something to think about if you're not taking in into, you know, in your mind uh, what the actual range of numbers you could potentially get and the variable that it's being stored in, right? That could, if you weren't anticipating this, this could be a major problem in your program. Okay, so that's characters and integers. We also have floats. So floats are our uh, numbers that contain a decimal point. Now, under the hood, they're stored a little bit odd. And so I brought up an article that talks about floating point numbers and how that they're, you know, kind of stored. And so we talk about, um, you know, these base numbers, exponents, mantissas, all this kind of stuff, right? And if you kind of read through here, you'll start to find uh, that, you know, we're using a certain standard in order to store these floating point numbers, right? And so I won't go too, you know, into the weeds here, but just to understand that, you know, the number of bits that are here, I can't, put, you know, possibly represent, uh, you know, some really um, intricate floating point or decimal numbers, right? So there's definitely going to be a limit to the number of, of decimal points uh, that I can really store, right? And so this kind of chart will go through and talk a little bit about that. But essentially, this is why we end up with um, numbers like this. So we can do something to the minus 38 or to the plus 38, right? So that's the number of zeros to the uh, to the right, you know, or left of these numbers, right? And so we typically consider this uh, single precision, double precision. Um, but either way, understand that there's a finite number of decimal points that you can store in these numbers. And so when you do math with them, you may start to get um, you know, errors that kind of build up because again, you can't store uh, all of those numbers. So again, something that you need to think about in the back of your mind. And if you need to be exact, then maybe you shouldn't be storing it as a floating point number and you have to come up with a different mechanism or different way of storing that number. Um, either way, we have the standard float, we have a double, and we have long doubles. They all have different uh, number of bytes that they're going to use. And based on that, you have a different range that we can specify, right? So again, precision, we can have six decimal places in a standard float. We can have 15 decimal places in a double, 19 in a long double, right? So obviously this is more precise, but you're using 10 bytes for every number that you store, right? And that could be quite wasteful. Um, but understand, even 19 decimal places, if you're trying for some really large numbers or some very exact numbers, you may not quite get what you think. Uh, and that's just because, again, because of the way that they're stored, they're, it's inexact, right? Um, so, that's that. Uh, and I won't be going too crazy into that. So we've covered most of the integer stuff, uh, most of the float stuff. You have your links to articles if you wanna do further research. And then there's a couple standard library entries that I would like to mention. Uh, standard def, uh, although on this system, it looks like it's an empty file. So if I do less user include, uh, I think it's Linux and standard def.h. I pretty much don't see anything in it, right? 
and so there's some there's some stuff going on in the background but essentially standard def is is one of those files that gives me something called uh, size underscore t so let's look at a function that that we'll talk about later if i do a man on stir uh, len this is how i get the length of a string or a character array well it returns a size underscore t okay well we didn't talk about size underscore t when we were talking about integers and floats so you know what is a size underscore t so i linked to another article uh size underscore t uh and this one is for geeks for geeks and in here it it basically mentions that hey size underscore t is guaranteed to be big enough to contain the size of the biggest object the host system can handle all right so this is one way for us to make sure that we don't hopefully get caught by the is this two bytes or four bytes depending upon you know what operating system or whatever size underscore t is going to be at least the largest number that this system can kind of handle right so let's check that out let's see if we can uh let's see we have already done count sizes so let, we'll just do sizes yeah sizes dot c in this case uh we'll get rid of that and instead of being int, it will be a size underscore t of x. And this is probably an LD. We'll get rid of that. All right. Uh, nothing to do for sizes.c. Oh, because it's supposed to be sizes. All right. All right. So it used eight bytes in order to store this number. So whereas when we were looking before uh, at our data types and we looked at uh, our long our long could use eight bytes on our 64-bit system so a size underscore t automatically uses eight bytes right because that's the most that our system can store and so we should see a pretty large number now we have size underscore t and we have s size underscore t so in this case when we looked at the man page uh, man of sterlen it brought back a size underscore t now size underscore t is a uh, unsigned long in this case right which is why we got eight bytes back so that makes sense that it's a long but in our case it's an unsigned number because you can't have a string that's negative five characters right so this is a signed number right or an unsigned number our s size underscore t is our so or is our signed version of that right and so there may be certain cases where um you're going to bring back the size of something but you know a negative number could be valid in that case and so there's a s size underscore t but for the most part you're going to see size underscore t used quite a bit right and so again something to put in the back of your mind um you know when using some of these functions that you're going to have to specify size underscore t and then maybe in your program you'll want to make sure that for you know your function you return a size underscore t because you know, the range could be large and you want to make sure it's uh at least your system is set up to hold that maximum kind of number that's you know possible right so if we look we've now talked a little bit about standard def um th that is one of the places that we you know have to end up including if we're going to use size underscore t now more than likely uh when i included um when i included what you might call it cat size underscore size of the stdio.h or something else that stdio.h included somewhere along the lines it learned about size underscore t 
but I have had before where I've had to bring in standard def, right? Now, standard bool is another one, and you may or may not uh, run into this too often, uh, but I find it kind of useful in um, specifying the return type of a function where I only want like a true or a false to come back. Well, under the hood, there's no such thing as a true or false, but there are, you know, zero, there are one. And so the standard bool kind of specifies what that might look like. So if we do um, less on user include, let's see, is it standard bool there? No, it's not. Let's try to find it. Find, it's probably under Linux. So we'll just do a find on user include name standard bool dot h and it did not find it interesting so let me let me check to see if i can even compile with that on here vi sizes dot c we'll try to pound include it I'm sure it's standard bool So it compiled. And in fact, a true is a one in this case. If we were to set this now to false, recompile, run it, it's now a zero. So I'm not quite sure why I couldn't find it. Maybe I did a typo user include name standardbool.h no i don't know what's up it should be there um as far as i'm aware um uh, but that's definitely a header file that we're able to pull in and uh compile with so let's okay so in this case it's in a different folder user lib gcc include standard bool.h so it does exist um, and it allows us to specify true or false now why would we you know potentially do that well it reads better right so when um, somebody else is reading your code and they can see that you're returning true well, that makes a little bit more sense or maybe it doesn't matter so much what you're returning but you're doing a comparison to what was returned and you're doing one thing if it's true and another thing if it's false, right? And so that makes it a little bit easier for somebody reading your code or maybe even for you writing your code uh, to make sense of. So under the hood, it's just an integer. It's just a zero or a one, but again, it kind of makes it a little bit nicer. Now, standard int's one that I use all the time, right? And so let's take a look at that. Hopefully I can find this one. So user include, uh, let's see, name standard int.h. Okay, so that one's definitely there. User include int.h. So if we take a look here, what we should see, yeah, so we have a bunch of type definitions. And what we're seeing is that uh, we're building kind of our own types and they always put an underscore T at the end so that you know it originated in a type def. And type def just again allows us to, uh, to have a type definition. But the cool thing about here is, you know, notice here, you int um, let's see, these are all the max, mins, which again, we could use 
and I think we saw that on some of the um, we saw this here as they were specifying so we were seeing some of these long maxes stuff like that well that's all kind of built in into you know standard in but the thing I'm looking for so let me just do a search you 32 no nope. Uh, let me go. Maybe it's built somewhere else. This is why you should prepare for these things, right? All right. The point I'm trying to make, and it might just take me a little bit longer to find where it's actually specified and built, um, and it might be built in one of these other ones, other includes that it makes, that we go under the hood, what it will essentially find is there are, are these type defs that can specify the exact number of bits that are in a data type. And so what that, where that's useful is maybe I want to build an integer, but I want to ensure that it's a 32-bit integer or an 8-bit integer or a 64-bit integer. And so if I vi sizes dot c, let's uh, pound include standard int dot h. And so what we should see is I can now specify that uh, I want a uint 32 underscore t and we'll call this just t and i can give it a value of just a number it doesn't really matter what the number is i'm going to get rid of some of these other things and i'm going to specify ld i want a size of t Okay, so 32 bits makes sense with four bytes, right? So there are eight bits in a byte. If I have four bytes, well, that means, you know, uh, four times eight is 32. So I have a 32 bit number. Um, if I go back up, I can, instead of making this 32 bit, I can make this eight. So what I'm saying is this is an unsigned integer with eight bits. So what I should see after I remake sizes, oh, I put a number in, it was too large. So I have a an overflow, which is, it's just a warning at this point. So obviously I should fix that, but by running it, what I see is that in fact, I only have a single byte uh, there. All right, this becomes super useful as we start uh, moving on to some custom data types where I'm gonna take a struct where I can specify uh, the, this custom data type and maybe this struct represents a uh, number of bits that I'm going to transmit on the network. And so this field lines up with, um, I don't know, uh, eight bits that says, well, you know, the type of message that I'm sending, right? And so by using uint uh, 8 underscore t, I can guarantee that I'm only going to transmit 8 bytes to represent uh, whatever uh, message type I have, right? Instead of specifying just int and wondering, uh, well, if I try to transmit this, is it going to send, you know, just 8 bytes? Is it going to send 4 bytes? You know, whatever using these standard ints, I can you know, kind of narrow that down, right? So it becomes super useful as you're doing structs and things like that. So what else do we have to talk about? So we talked about uh, size underscore T, uh, S size underscore T was the signed version of it. And I have, you know, we, we went to that article, checked it out, standard int, super useful. Uh, standard bool is useful for just making your code a little bit more readable. We talked about floats and how, uh, you know, they're not super accurate. 
but we can get more and more precision, but that takes more and more bytes in order to store it. If you wanna do further research on how they're actually stored, go ahead and follow this uh, link. Um, we also you know, found out how we can uh, compile to 32-bit, and that was just using that by up arrow ways. Well, I'm probably gonna have to up arrow too far. But we did GCC TAC M32. And that said, hey, compile this as a 32-bit binary. But in order to do that, GCC had to have the appropriate libraries to do so. And so we installed GCC multi-lib. All right, well, how do we know if we're on a 32-bit or 64-bit? we checked out the uname, right? And so on our system, we found out I'm in fact on a 64-bit system. As we start looking at our integers, we need to take into consideration the range of values that we're gonna store in it and whether or not we want signed or unsigned numbers. Is it ever gonna have to be negative? If it doesn't, maybe we make it unsigned. And so we get a higher, uh, higher numbers that we can specify because we're no longer concerned about uh, ever being negative. We saw this size of uh, macro in order to figure out uh, how many bytes a, a certain variable uh, is stored under. So we found that you know, ints, depending upon our system, whether it was 32-bit or 64-bit, sometimes that changes. So again, size of operator comes in handy. Um, and you'll find you end up using this quite a bit. Um, especially when you start specifying uh, dynamic memory and how much memory you want or uh, specifying uh, an array uh, of a certain size, the size of kind of comes in handy, right? And so again, if you want to look back at those ranges of numbers and, and how that works, uh, you can hit up this link, which we you know talked about before. Um, and we snuck in a little bit of ASCII in there um, to see some of the actual characters and how they're represented. So I know this was kind of all over the place um, and we didn't do a ton of code uh, using uh, some of these data types, but I think it's more important that you kind of see what's happening under the hood to understand what you're really specifying when you start using various integer types and various float types. Um, and so I invite you to go back and look at those articles and kind of read through them and get a better feel uh, for, for you know what those numbers actually are. Again, hope it was super useful um, and I thank you for watching. All right, bye.